I just want to address a little problem that people keep asking me about when they're trying to blend multiple exposures together. Here we've got a shot up the Ogwin Valley and uh, yeah, it's taking full bore sunshine and obviously from an exposure point of view it's an absolute nightmare. We've got another shot um, where we've got slightly less um, sunlight thawing on the foreground but as you can see the sky is absolutely shocking and we've got a very underexposed shot where we've got a half decent exposure of the sky although the sky is fairly low in contrast and that's something else you'd expect because we're actually facing into the sun so basically the contrast gets washed out of the image what we're going to do here is address this little problem people keep asking me about when they try to blend a shot such as this with a shot such as that and they get these strange little white edges and edge artifacts and they don't know how to get rid of them. Really and truly we don't actually need to generate them in the first place because there are many many ways of getting around edge artifacting in images and it's all to do with sharpening and the actual quality of the edge in the image straight off the sensor and I'm actually just starting um, production on a landscape photography sharpening tutorial which is going to go into a great deal of depth over edge control, edge contrast control various edge sharpening methods in Lightroom, Photoshop and the likes of other third party raw file generators such as raw therapy. Um, everybody should get raw therapy, yes they should, it's free, go and download it. But I do warn you now that if you think the Lightroom develop module is complicated, raw therapy has a tendency to make the develop module of Lightroom look about as complicated as the storyline for an episode of Teletubbies. But, <laughs> so there you go. Just a little warning, but go and download Raw Therapy, but we're not going to be using it here. What we're going to be doing in this little quick lesson is looking at a very, very simple technique to blend this image, or I should say this image, which is actually an HDR merge of this light frame and this slightly darker frame. And um, Notice these have got no sharpening on them, by the way. And we're going to blend this image with this sky shot. And it's going to look seamless. No white edges, no dark edges, no haloing, no edge artifacts. Even though we can generate this image inside the HDR photo merge of Lightroom, we can't actually get a successful merge with these two frames here and this darker sky exposure well we can but it's not very successful if we go and have a look at it we'll just blow it up to a hundred percent and straight away you can see we're generating a halo we are generating pixel artifacts in places we're also generating them over here we're getting edge confusion here and here and if we take it up to a 4 to 1 view, you can see we're also generating the typical sort of unsharp mask, if you like, artifact of darker pixels on the darker side of the edge, even though the images have got no sharpening applied to them. So basically, I wouldn't expect Lightroom to be able to do a very good job of this particular photo merge, because it's is quite extreme and uh, the actual photo merge inside of Lightroom the HDR photo merge is really a little bit on the simple side it's not as all singing all dancing as uh, the likes of Adobe would have you believe and images such as this require so much retouching in Photoshop when you when you see the technique I'm going to show you now you'll just think well god why have I never done this before so what we're going to do is 
seamlessly blend this image here which you can see has got no dark edges to speak of no artifacting to speak of and we're going to ge uh, generate an image which is basically a blend between that and this sky shot so let's get started we'll select both images and we will right click edit in open as layers inside Photoshop and there we go lovely jubbly the first thing I'm going to do is take this dark or dark exposure for the sky and stick it underneath our foreground image the next thing I'm going to do is go and get my quick select tool make sure I'm in the add mode and we'll come across and do a really really quick and dirty selection of the sky and I'm not going to feather this selection at all I'm going to click on the uh, actual shot itself and we're going to add a mask and of course that mask is the wrong way around so we'll go and invert it and straight away we can see yes the image has got a contrast fall off on it so it does need a contrast adjustment increase if you like on this top top half but overall the image is in balance it matches the sky goes with the foreground but straight away you can see we've got this edge problem here and if we go into the image at 100 percent you can see we've got a slight alignment problem there along that edge but it's bitty and i'm not really particularly bothered about it for the simple reason that we're going to negate that very very simply and if we were to auto align the two layers believe you me we would still have artifacting along this edge so if i come out to a fit to screen view rather like that the selection i've made here our foreground to reveal our foreground and hide the overexposed sky I'm actually going to command click on that to reactivate the selection I'm going to come down onto the layer with the sky in it that we want to keep and I'm going to add a mask there as well but now that needs to be inverted so now you can see I've got my full complement of white line white edging I am going to now apply this layer mask on the sky layer I'm going to apply it to the image so now I've got an isolated foreground on my top layer and I've got an isolated sky on my bottom layer the next thing I'm going to do is go and activate my move tool and I'm going to go show transform controls and I'm just going to resize the sky as I said it's, it's a little bit of a quick low down bit of a dirty technique but it works and the small amount of resizing we're going to do to the sky isn't going to make any difference to the image quality of the sky so what we'll do is we'll pull it down a little bit and straight away you can see that edge is cleaned up we will hold down the shift key and just make it slightly wider a bit like that and maybe pull it down a little tiny bit more and there we go we'll hit the tick mark check mark and we'll say that's okay if we now hide our transform controls come into the image at 100 percent now you can see we've got this white edge okay and this white edge needs to be taken care of you'll notice roughly in the middle of the image things aren't looking too bad remember when we tried to do this in lightroom we've got a load of artifacting up here and haloing and gonna show me knows what else was going on so anyway we're going to come to this top layer the one with our foreground on it and we're going to temporarily come out to a fit to screen view and I'm going to go into quick mask mode I'm going to pull up my brush and I'm going to draw the red quick mask line along the join if you like between the two layers 
Okay, rather like that. And then, of course, the minute I exit quick match mode, I will have a selection active. But the selection is actually the inverse of what I want. So I'm going to go select, inverse. Now, here's the thing that you must bear in mind if and when you ever adopt this technique. This selection must apply not to the image, but to the mask. So what we need to do is go and click on the mask to make it the active layer component. And we are going to just simply go filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and we're just going to blur it by one pixel. And this is the mask that we blur in. So there we go. Now we're going to hide that selection. We'll keep it active for a moment but we'll hide it and we'll go into the image at 100%. And then the next thing that we're gonna do is go to image adjustments levels, making sure again that it is the mask that is the active component. And you cannot do this operation on a levels adjustment layer, it won't work. You have to do it this way. And all we're gonna do is Pull this down here so we can see. We're going to get the mid-tone slider and we're going to move it to the right. Oh, look at that. Where's that edge gone? Let us scoot over to here. Let's just adjust it a little tiny bit more. And there we go. We've got no white edging over here. And if we follow the line of the join, that join is just about as seamless as you could possibly wish for. So we'll go ahead and click OK and we'll come out to a fit to screen view and there is a very very simple quick you might say bit low down dirty trick to actually seamlessly blend two layers or if you like two images together of differing exposures without any haloing, any rough edges or the need to do any further retouching to that edge. So uh, yeah, I told you it wasn't going to be a perfect image but that wasn't the point of the exercise. The point of the exercise was to show you how to get that perfect edge. So uh, there you go. Hope you've enjoyed that, hope you find it useful. Click the subscribe button down below Click the ringity tingity bell and uh, then you'll get a notification when I put another useful tip up on my YouTube channel. So until then, I'll see you again. See you later. Bye.